Hey guys, unfortunately the season is starting to come to an end and one of the things I do myself is I close my sprinklers. It works great, it's easy, and I'm gonna take you through all the steps, so stay tuned. So we're down in the basement right now and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn off the water supply that goes to the sprinklers outside. So you're gonna have some type of a valve like this and you'll wanna shut it off first. So one critical item you're going to need to close your sprinklers is you're going to need an air compressor. Now I have a pretty good sized one here and I watched some other videos on YouTube where people had gigantic compressors. You do not need a huge compressor. Even a small pancake compressor can do the job. So every air compressor is going to have two gauges like you see. The one on the left is the source pressure that comes from the tank. The one on the right, which you see here, is the pressure that goes out of your air hose. Now it's critical when you're closing sprinklers, a lot of people don't take this step, and this is important, you've got to lower the pressure to 40 PSI. Anything higher can damage the sprinklers. This is a manufacturer recommendation that you want to follow. So turn your knob until you get it to 40 PSI. So now we're outside. So unfortunately, these plants that you see here, they're blocking me from where my sprinkler valve is that I have to get to if I'm gonna winterize them. So I figured I'd share this with you so you can see some of the work that I have to do. So what I'm doing here is I use a two by four to push these plants back so that I can get in there to work and get to the sprinkler valve. These plants are pretty old and they're very thick. So as you can see, there's my sprinkler valve inside. So now let's get to work. So every outdoor valve can be different, but on mine here, I have my backflow preventer and I have my setup where I have a small plug in the bottom here. You can see it with the square that I'm using my adjustable wrench on, and I need to take that out. Now remember, my water shut off, so there won't be any pressure in here still, but I'm going to undo this, and then I need to hook up my air compressor so that I can blow out the lines. Now your installation might be a little bit different, and sometimes it pays to have someone close your system once, but if you can watch them, you can see how they do it. But most installations are going to be similar to this. The small amount of water that you see coming out is just the water that was in the backflow preventer and it's really important that you do let it drain out like this. So now that's the fitting that I need to tie into, but that's not going to fit an air compressor, so let me show you what I did to make an adapter. So now we're in my garage to show you this adapter that I made. This is made by putting a few plumbing parts together that you can get at Lowe's, Home Depot, or any of those stores. And the goal of this is you just want to adapt the plumbing fitting outside to this size fitting right here, which is what you're going to plug into your air compressor line. And you can see it works perfectly. Remember too, at the end of the year, you want to keep that adapter safe because you're going to use it every single year. So all I have to do is screw that in. You don't need Teflon tape. You don't need any of that because it just needs to be reasonably tight and it'll be well sealed with the threads alone. So I'm just going to snug that up and get it ready. Now we're going to connect the air hose from our air compressor into it. Now at this point, you may hear some air hiss, but it's not going to start doing anything until we take the next step. But before I do the next step, I have to tell you one thing. There are two ways you can do this, at least in my case. I can either use my computer-based controller, which I'm going to show you that's run through my iPhone using a ratio sprinkler controller, but that's a high-tech approach. If you have a traditional sprinkler controller, you can use that as well, or you can do another technique that I'm going to show you right after the iPhone. So don't tune out yet because I'm going to show you both ways so that anybody can close their sprinklers. So from the iPhone, we're going to launch our ratio app. Then we're going to choose the three dots under quick run. And then there's a great option there, select all zones. And now we can actually activate all our zones one at a time. And it's preset up with a three minute runtime, which is really perfect to close sprinklers. That's how I like to do it. I run each sprinkler for three minutes to blow the water out of the lines. So as promised, here's the other approach you can take, and this is just fine, they both work the same. You can go out and remove the cover to your outdoor valve box, and if you have more than one valve box, you'll have to do each zone independently. Once you have it off, you're going to have a setup similar to what you see inside. But this is important, and you may never have seen this before. Each of these black um, sort of rings here and these little solenoids controls one of your sprinkler zones. If you actually twist it, and you can see the arrow, and I'll give you a close-up there, if you twist it counterclockwise, just a quarter turn, and it says that right there, a quarter turn, when you turn that, your sprinkler will actually open up. So you only want to do one zone at a time and give it a few minutes to run, and then when you're done, you're going to close that back up and then do each zone until you're done, and you can replace the lid like you've seen shown, and it works just fine.
So I thought I would share what it looks like once I'm pumping the air through each zone because if you've never closed sprinklers, it can be a little bit weird. So when you're blowing these out zone by zone, your sprinklers are gonna act like they're from outer space. They're gonna be spitting water, sputtering. You're gonna think they're done and then they're gonna start squirting again. So you have to give it a few minutes per zone. Like I said, I do three minutes per zone. If you're concerned, you can actually do three minutes twice, but I like to cycle them through if you're gonna do that. Don't just do six minutes. So you do one set of each. But here you can see there's air coming out, there's mist, they're gonna pop up and down like crazy because they're obviously designed to pump water. So when you put the air through, they act a little bit different. And these are my shrub ones. You can see they act a little bit different as well. But this is useful for you to see so that yours will not seem so strange when you're blowing them out. And sometimes they won't even have enough pressure when they really get low on water to stay upright and you'll get something like this. And this is okay too, as long as you really don't see any more water squirting out. So now we're gonna start wrapping up. All I need to do is disconnect my air hose and be careful because when you do, there can be some air pressure that comes out and I really recommend keeping eye protection on during this. It's never a bad idea. You're just gonna unscrew your adapter like shown and replace it with the plug. Now what I do is I put the plug in fairly loose just in case any water wants to still drip out. And then in the springtime when I go back to this, what I do is I actually do put some either Teflon tape or some pipe sealing on it. Additionally, I close those valves and there are some bleeder screws there as well and some people will leave those open. I personally don't, but that's not a problem as well. So here's some shots of my sprinklers before I closed them out so I can remember them for next year. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for more videos coming up. Thanks for watching.